Hey guys, and how's it going? I was on Facebook Marketplace looking for a set of wheels for an air-cooled VW that I have. And I went there, this chassis was sitting there. It's a, basically a miniature Volkswagen dune buggy shell. And I said, what do you want for that? And it came to the conclusion of a hundred bucks. So that came home with me. The following weekend, I went to uh, a local swap meet, New England Dragway. They have it last Sunday of every month. And this was there. I think it's a Dingo go-kart. And it looks like, again, it's been sitting out in the weather for a long time. No engine on it, pretty much just a metal frame and some wheels. And I was kind of wondering possibly, will the wheelbase match up with that chassis? So I grabbed that, also for hundred bucks. And last but not least, a friend of mine, Dan, gave me a call. I still had the chassis on the back of the truck. And he said, I went to my local scrapyard and this was there. I think he said it was either a generator or a pressure washer that it was running and uh, that other part of it was no good but he grabbed the engine so my thoughts i think you can kind of relate is to see if we could possibly put these three pieces together if not you know maybe work with something else but i think it gives us a good start huh so let's go take the middle piece right there we'll get it over on the lift we'll kind of give ourselves an assessment of what we have and start doing some wrenching some torching and hopefully try to build something out of those three pieces all right let's Get into it. Come on. Let's get that ass end up in the air. There you go. I'm spin things and see how they look. Let's give ourselves a general overlook on the chassis itself. No seat. I see one pedal, probably be the brake pedal. I don't see anything for the throttle that we got for steering. King pins are a little on the frozen side. Bearings noise on that one. That one's quiet. All right, let's go see what the back has to offer. There's something in the tire. Got a brake band drum for the brakes. It's like that's pretty bent. How about the sprocket? Sprocket's got a whoop de doo on it too. The axle doesn't look too bad though. It looks fairly straight. See wobbling on the tires. Good. I think um, while we're screwing around, let's go throw some air in the tires and we'll see if they hold. I don't know if they have tubes or not. That doesn't look like a tube. That looks like a regular valve stem. Yeah, let's go throw some air in them. Right now they're kind of no air, but so stiff they hold themselves up. Yeah, let's go throw some air in those and we'll do our, continue our assessment and we'll check back on them. I'll put like 10 pounds in each one. Well, in the bet, that one says a zero. Yeah, nothing. I don't know if I said the chassis was a hundred bucks also. So the cart, the fiberglass body was a hundred. The chassis was a hundred and the engine was free. That's 10. Eight. I'm going to do the same to the other ones and we'll go do something else. I think the tires grew a little bit. <laughs> Sit in the lift. Let's go click her up one. There we go. So the one on the other side has got some dry rot and cracks in it. I'm not too sure how long that one's going to hold up. This one doesn't look too bad. Yeah, you can tell where it contacted the ground. It's usually where they fail. See some cracking on that one, but this is the one that has a bunch of it. Right there's the worst. Let's go give a little bit of a spray, a soap spray on them. See if it's leaking through it. Might have a tube for that one. Is that a, there's a patch right there, an old one. Let go spray it down. Probably get away lawnmower tires if we have to. Let's just see what this does. Give that plug a good shot. All right, we'll check back on that. Uh, I'm going to actually do the other four. And a quick assessment. We have a, a small one going right there. 
Seems to be about, oh, we got bubbles blowing on the side. Yeah, that side wall's beat. That's a good one, too. I'm looking at the uh, axle. It looks like the nut is loose, like they never tightened stuff up. Maybe took them apart. I don't know if they were trying to fix a flat. I think we'll give that shot, a side wall shot. Yeah, so that's going to be an issue. Uh, as far as the chassis is concerned, I think the upper bar right there, this, I even call it a sissy bar, <laughs> roll cage, comes down. It's all part of this frame. Looks like we can unbolt it. Actually, there's only one bolt holding it there. And then where it meets the backrest, we'll unbolt it. And we'll get rid of that because I don't think that chassis is going to want to fit inside that fiberglass shell. Let's go take a look at the shell. Yeah, it's looking pretty skinny. I'm gonna grab a tape measure. We'll measure that distance going across in there. And we got an ID of 21. Let's go look at the chassis. And this looks wider than 21 to me. 25 to the outside edge, roughly. All right, yeah, so let's go get this cage off there and then we'll try dropping that shell on there and see how we make out. Let the weight reduction begin. We could always put it back on later if we find if we use it. Let's go for the shell. Oh my. How well do you want to play with each other? Other than the steering wheel. <laughs> Draw it up as far as we can. Let's see if we can click it over the wheel. Wow, it's right there. We might be able to use it just as it is. Let's go. I have to take the wheel off to do it though. That looks good like that. <laughs> Are they call them gassers. Yeah, so the wheel's kind of fighting it. Let's um see if we could take that wheel right off. Looks like we're probably gonna end up trimming this anyway. We'll be trimming a lot of things. Let's see if we get it to drop down. What's our wheelbase look like? Looks like the body can go back a little. And the front's got plenty of room to work with. And can we go, will it go back at all? It's already sitting on that bar. It's about as low as that's going to be able to drop. Again, another. We need room for the engine anyway. That's a pretty tall motor, so the back might have to stay like that. All right, let's get the uh, steering wheel off of it and see if we can get that nose to drop down and get a better idea what's happening. How do you think that's held on? I don't see anything to pop out of the center. And I might have a set screw right there. Yeah, go peek in there. See if it's like a pin or something we can knock out. Just kind of poking around what was going on. There was a bolt and it looked like the bolt was loose and they jammed a tie wrap in with it. <laughs> Gonna get a socket on that, see if it'll come out of there. I think it's the wrong size. I think it's not 7 16 so let's see what happens. Yeah. Putting the wrong tool in the wrong hole. We think it would just kind of put a nut and bolt through it. Chances are that's just gonna fall right off of there. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> Let's get something to try to pry underneath it and or beat the into submission. My guess is is the metal collar under there, and the two of them are gonna weld themselves together. Which kind of sucks because you can't put heat on that because they're just gonna melt the wheel. Let's see if I can uh, come up with a puller. I wanted to pull it too, we need to be able to push off the center of it. Hmm. It's coming off, just doesn't know it yet. Can't tell if the middle of that is the actual post that's coming up. Let's go hit it with a drill. Yeah, it's all plastic all the way through. I think it's hollow too. Hmm. I may egg it out some more till we get to metal. 
and then I'll be able to put a puller on it where we can catch the jacket somewhere. The other part too, I, I wonder if I was able to hook the body over the front of the steering wheel first and then drop it down. hitting something. I think maybe we'll try the uh, an impact hammer from the bottom. Let's go give her some lube first. I don't think it's going to do very much, but actually I wonder if we can, um, can we twist it now the bolt's not in it? We can get it to spin on it, you know. Yeah. That's what happens when it's got 20 winners under its belt. Hammer time. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna come up with something different. Looks like it just has a hose clamp, is the stop for how far the shaft can slide up. If we can lift that up out of our way, might be able to get, yeah, do something like that. Should probably take the tie rods off. Let's see if I can get the body on there now. That might be enough room. Should probably just dis disconnect the tie rod ends. I could probably even get it to go up further. Just like it was already cut to fit around a, some kind of frame. I'm looking at that one right back in there. And this one actually kind of lines up to what it would need to be. Are we clearing? No, we're not on the other side of that wall. I wonder if we could spread it to fit over that. It's close. All right. How are we looking? <laughs> it's pretty cool, doesn't it? Um, I don't know. I think maybe we should grab the engine and set it in there and see how much clearance we have for that. I'm definitely not opposed to cutting stuff up and making it fit. So, and it's probably what's going to happen. Tire's starting to look like Santa Claus, isn't it? No leaks there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's go take a tape measure to the engine height and we'll see what we got. And we also got to try to figure out where we're going to line up with that sprocket. I think we can move that sprocket around a little bit. That's a big engine. I don't know if it shows in the, vid in the uh, video, but like, compared to a mini bike engine. So it's looking at like 17 to the top of the gas cap. Let's see how much room we got on the shelf. Yeah, it's going to be close. <laughs> so like this. Get some dirt out. 16. So that shell would have to push up another inch. I wonder if we can take the engine and maybe take some of the stuff off the top of it and make it a little shorter. And so looking into that, what we got for our power source. Air cleaner can come off, muffler can come off, and actually the gas tank can too. Maybe we can kind of tweak things a little bit. Plus we'd cut a hole anyway for the uh gas cap to come through. I think there's, was there two holes in the top of that already? Yeah, let's go get this up on the bench and we'll do a little bit of dissection. 
Probably should see if it runs. <laughs> yeah, let's go take a peek at this thing. Impression. Looks like the exhaust is loose. The shaft, it's got the bolt in the center of it. And I'm guessing that's like a, maybe a one inch diameter. And how are we doing for Earl? Some in there, it's low. It's enough for us to go check it out though. Let's see what we got for gas. Any gas? I said, Dan said he had it running. That's the condition that's in. It is bone, there's not an ounce of fuel in it. I don't know if you drained it or it drained itself. It is bone dry. Probably just put a little something in the uh, spark plug hole, give her a yank and see if it'll fire over for us. Yeah, let's go. Uh, tank's empty already anyway, and we're gonna need to get it, get it smaller. So let's go do that. Let's get rid of the tank. Let's get rid of the air cleaner setup and the muffler, and we'll try stuffing it up there. We still gotta see if it's gonna fit within that base plate too. What is that? That is something different. What is that? I don't see any air cleaner neither. I don't know what this uh, apparatus of this thing does though. Maybe like a carbon canister for emissions. Hmm. We need to do to get rid of that. Let's so, um, it's got some weird bolt on it too. That's not what should be on there. A slide off. Throttles free. Right, let's get that muffler and the air cleaner off. I said air cleaner. It's the, it's the muffler. Right. Out of the way. And for the air cleaner, we got two going up from the side. Can we get in there with this? Tens there. That bolt out of there. free. Nah, something's still holding it. Probably under this cover. Hey, get a screwdriver to get the fuel shut off off of it. I think there's a 10 on the side here. <laughs> yeah, we had one more hiding. Under that cover. It looks like, again, I went to a scrapyard. I wonder if they drained the fuel out of it because the fuel line is either broken off or cut off on the end of it. Oh, we're not done playing. There it goes. Yeah. That makes it a lot shorter, huh? That's probably about 12 high. Kind of want to make our own exhaust anyway. Let's go grab tape measure and see how tall it is. So we are at, yeah, 12, 12 to right here. The governor linkage is sticking 
Let's call it 13 to be safe. I'm gonna go get like a bungee or a ratchet strap or something. I'll take the shell, I'll tie it to the, the rafter above it, and we'll lift the shell up out of our way and we'll try placing the motor. And if we get happy with that, <laughs> we'll uh, lower the body back down, see how we can make out. It's at least one pound lighter. The it would have to be well we can kick that sprocket over too. Let me um let me get a little piece of wood to shim it. See how that kind of eyeballs for us. Like we could probably either cut that base plate. Actually, the engine wouldn't be bad sitting in the middle like that. I think we can kick the sprocket over because we're gonna have to get a uh, clutch on there. The other thing too is the distance. That's pretty close. Let me go look for a clutch. I may have one. Another project I'm working on was um, looks like it'd be a similar setup to this. Let me go see if I have a clutch for it. Ah, uh, yes, it pays to be a pack rat. Uh, is that the right one? That was pretty good. So we would have to get... Might be able to flip it over, too. Can we do that? I think it works either direction. Get the, the sprocket a little closer to the center. How does that look? Actually, that's pretty good. I wonder if... Um, we got enough bite on the chain. I think it would be okay. The closer it is, the less teeth that you're grabbing on the clutch. And yeah, we look on that base plate. Here's the holes. I'm gonna pop in the stand. So it seems like it would have to come way back anyway. So we either cut that one free or not. Let's um, rock that back to about right there. And get a little skinnier piece of wood. We'll try lowering that shell on there and we'll try to see front to back, side to side, how it's gonna line up for us. I think we might be okay. This is gonna be close on the back of the shell, I think. Let's go lower that. So, might be able to notch out around that license plate too for it to stick out. I do have a smaller engine. What fun is that? <laughs> I see. As far as the seat rail is concerned, it's as far forward as it can go. We could probably slide it back, maybe a hair. It's kind of looking good. That distance is looking pretty decent right there. And can we go lower? Like if we have, if we notch that, oh, there's a rib there, huh? There's a rib right here, holding the shell up a little bit. Of course, it's probably right in the center too, right? Yeah, let me grab a light. Yeah, there's a rib right there. I don't know if we can, maybe we could shift the engine over to squeeze it between now it's dead center, it's just one. Of course it's dead center. <laughs> I don't know. And we can slide the engine forward about two or three inches. Let's do that. I don't think we're gonna clear that plug setup. We still have to cut around that, that piece right there. Let's go kick it forward just a little bit. I think that's all it's got. It's, uh, we can grunt whatever that tab is right there. That's where the fuel tank, I think, sat. That tab right there. If I grab another half inch off of that, 
exhaust will kick out here. We can make a muffler coming out. That shouldn't be an issue. Carb is still on it. We can get an air cleaner on it. I think we could work with that. i just like to be able to drop that body down a little bit more though, huh? Yeah, and where that plug is, it's smashing up against the fiberglass. I'm looking right there. Yeah, so you can ground that tab, kick that forward a little. Now we look at the inside. I'd like to be able to drop the shell down. I like almost get this flush maybe. I think we're close. We can get rid of that plastic that's up there too. That's the, uh, just a controller. We could relocate that somewhere else. Hmm. It had an engine in it once before. Actually, this combination was never together. What about um, the <laughs> sitting in it? <laughs> Is there enough room? Cause you gotta look, that's where the floor would have normally sat on a chassis, how much higher it still is. It's still up, you know, good three inches in the front yet. What's holding, what's that sitting on the steering column? Keeping the nose from going down. Yeah, I'd like to work that whole shell down if we can. I wonder if we could take and notch the frame a little, like if we take, you know, maybe an inch off of each side and kind of shrink those rails in or out either way, right? To clear the body. My guess is in because we got an angle right there. Hmm. So I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to continue to pick away and see what we can come up with as far as um, making room and trying to get the body to line up better on there. Again, like I said, I have another engine if I have to. It's like a, a six horse, probably be, you know, 20% smaller than that, but I want to try to get this one in there. I think I looked at it enough. I think we're going to do some cutting. So my thought is we're going to knock about maybe an inch off of each side right there and it'll allow this bar to come in and then this plastic, can, this fiberglass can drop down, may up with that notch and the same on the other side. We'll knock off roughly about an inch out of that and hopefully those two sides will squeeze in and then we can use the two locations where it looks like pipes already went through previously. And I think the front should bend. We should be able to bend that one in like a big C-clamp. And as far as the steering, what was that? Big steering column. Well, let's go chop something like that off right there going across. Allow this dash to kind of drop down a little bit. Look how close do you think I got to being an inch on that? That's an inch right, right, right there. Ha. We do the same on the other side. No turning back now. Okay, get in there. It's pretty thick. We do the same to the other side. I'm going to take a flapper disc and clean up some of these edges and we'll try drawing it together. If I can, I'm going to get a tack on each one of them just to, to hold it. We still have to deal with the uh, rear end part of it, you know, take a notch maybe out of the center of it. We should probably cut this right out. And yeah. I'm wondering if I should do that now or not. Let's, um, I like to only do one cut on this is gonna have to get moved anyway so let's go cut it here and here get this off of here and we'll take i'll measure those two pieces of pipe right there and we'll put them together and we'll cut that much out of the center of it and uh might be able to get a piece of pipe in the middle of it too to help support it let me weld it or i just put an angle on it too over the outside they're still warm it's only metal right we always put it back so we need that much cut out of it to be roughly the same out of there let's go chop that out and we'll all cut these two also gotta get some new big batteries for the uh, sawzaw so i'm gonna switch over i'm gonna try 
I used this in the past. It's a metal blade, diamond cut. And I think there was something up with it. I think it might have thrown like uh, little shards at you. <laughs> Let's go try it again. Go finish it off with the saws off. Yeah, it should kind of spring together. <laughs> What's holding it? Actually, I think the, the bearings might be holding it on the axle. Let's, um, I'm going to go clean this up. I'm going to see if I can find a piece of pipe that will fit in there before I try to close that so that we have a little bit of uh, lateral support. So I found a can of like mix and match ends. This is the ID. Probably could work, but I'm also thinking too, we might be able to slice this in half. We could put this together, weld it, and then clamp this on both sides of it and weld this solid over or something like this. So let's um, grab some clampage and see if we can squeeze that rear end together, get a couple tacks, just do a little bit more proof of concept instead of committing to everything. We're still trying to get that body to fit and the engine to fit. <laughs> see if a couple of hardware rate cramps, cramps, clamps can give it their all. The other side's moving. Five minutes more. How about we double indemnity? I'm gonna go on the other side and put one there. I'm trying to think what else I have for a, a decent. Yeah. Definitely gonna need something beefier than that to squeeze her together because we're trying to bend those tubes in the front. I'm gonna throw it on the back too. Let's see if I get the back to kind of squeeze in a little. Because we're trying to, uh, right now we're trying to torque these up into themselves. Yeah, what if I something a little bit heavier? Yeah, I might try putting something across here and see if we can get this part to draw in. The axle might hold this up. If so, my thought is maybe we'll just unbolt the axle and drop it right out for now. Get it out of our way. And we'll worry about uh, finagling that after the game. That's out of the way. See how squishy it wants to squish me out. Oh yeah, that moves a lot easier. I just draw the back two together. I'm gonna see about, I may have a come along. We'll wrap a come along around the front and try to give it a little squishy. Actually, let's go try those clamps again. Touching kind of screwed up on my calibration because it would make sense that you're going together on a taper. The back is already almost touching. Uh, actually, if I get those wings to bend, if I get them to bend up, it may be okay. If I do the same, so I said I'll take a come along. I'll try wrapping around it right here. If worst case, we'll throw some heat on these and get them a little soft, and then they should be able to bend up. Let's see what that power of persuasion does for us. There we go. 
This side's touching, that side's got about a quarter inch. I think if we get a tack on them, just kind of hold it in place, and we'll drop the body back down on it. It'll give us a better idea. Again, I'm not gonna weld anything up until we figure out how everything's gonna fit together for us. Plus, you know, if we're happy with that, we'll throw some heat on here and it'll relax it. And of course, we're kind of pinching it on an angle. Again, we're just trying to figure out how it's gonna fit. See if you kind of force that one in a, a better spot. One of you would stand there. <laughs> I can strap the chassis down to the bench. I can get a little bit more leverage on it and pull it into location. Try that. Try pushing down on it. Instead of pulling up. Yeah. It's almost stay on its own now. I'm going to get a piece of angle for the back and clamp it to it to straighten these two out and get a couple tacks on that. Think it'll stay? I think so. Close enough for now. We still got more, more tweaking to do, but we're not sure if we're gonna cut some more. All right, let's, um, we gotta cut the little lip for the steering wheel, get the, rid of the come along, and we'll try dropping the body back on. Let's see how this blade does. drop this puppy on there. I suspect it's gonna fight us on the taper a little bit, but let's go see. We 
are sitting on the two bar, yeah, those little angles are getting us down below. The front can actually go upward. Oh, you know what's also holding us? The rest of the engine plate. So we, we'll cut this right out of here. That'll allow that to drop down into those notches. Anything in the place that we see it's getting us. It's right there on both sides. But let's go get the engine plate out because it may, the angle of the seat, if we able to come down, it may be able to go forward a little bit. Again, I like to not cut out what we need, but we have to just trim a little bit off of these. Went back to regular cutting wheel. Wasn't all that impressed with that thing. That's probably why I took it off in the first place. That's more like it. It's sitting in those uh, channels that we're talking about. Plus it'll make it easier to attach the body to that in the future. And a little bit of shaving, but not much. We're almost at the, uh, the apex on both of them. So let's, uh, I know I gotta throw some heat to straighten that frame out, but let's, I wonder if we can maybe the axle, the axle sits lower. I wonder if we can take, I'm probably just making a new cradle at, at this point. I don't know. Actually, we'll look at this. We'll see if this lines up to the bolt pattern. If so, we'll, we'll sacrifice this. If not, we'll make another one. But I wonder if instead of like that one was up tall and proud, we could probably lower it. If we lower it down here somewhere, it'll help with the center of gravity. Plus it'll help with us clearing the, uh, pl the uh, fiberglass up above. Let's uh, get the engine on there. I got a little, we'll grab like one of the two of the little elevator things and we'll kind of pitch it and kind of get a good idea of where we want it to set up and maybe start making the pieces from there. Actually, I think we're going to jump over to the axle for a little while and you take some time and now I don't know what I got to heat and beat to get the bearings off of here because these both have to come in about three quarters of an inch to fit back on the frame. The sprocket's bent, it either be replaced or try to press it straight. And of course, you know, someone's been hammering on the flange of that to try to move it. These guys are all seized up. So I'm going to go take some time, clean all this up, get all this stuff off of here, the brake drums out around and uh, get all that cleaned up so that we can get the axle put back up underneath it. So we'll have an idea where that plate can fit. So the last thing that's on here is the sprocket and the way they come apart, they have like, they pinch themselves onto the shaft. You see these three holes here. Generally there would be three bolts here and there's not. That would squeeze this half and this half together. If you flip this around, I'll show you. You flip it around, you could see the two halves of the taper that are on that. And this is that outer ring that we were just showing. So when those three bolts are there, that taper gets drawn together and it tightens down on the shaft. All well and done for what it is. But on this one, <laughs> someone's uh, egged out a bunch of stuff. And then to push it back apart, you would take a bolt and you would thread it into this hole right here. And it would push the two halves apart and allow it to, to uh, get free again. Unfortunately, somebody has beat the ever living bejesus out of it, stripped the threads out of everything, elongated the holes and hit everything with a hammer to its uh, <laughs> last dying grace of trying to move that sprocket from one side to another. So I don't know, 
if I'll be able to air hammer this apart, it, there's a lot of force in there. Plus this thing's gonna be all rusty. And the other problem is I can't really get a tap in here to fix this because it, it just stops right there. The idea is to thread into this block and then push off of this one. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do to try to get around that. I may try threading it in or try getting a, maybe a bottoming tap to start on that and get it to work a little bit. Not sure. I got tension on that side pushing off. Let's try hitting it with the hammer, air hammer on this side, see if it'll break. Or just a big hammer in general. <laughs> yeah, that's not supposed to come apart, kinda. And then normally you would just kind of tap it off the key and get it off of there just like the other stuff, but somebody has welded <laughs> a glob onto this. I'm gonna try tapping it this way, get it off the key, clean that up, and then we'll try driving it out that direction. Could probably grind that off too. So I'm going to go take a wire wheel, clean all the surface up, and then try to slide it all the way off on this end. We'll have a uh, nice, clean, free shaft. Things just kind of slopped together, but just to give us a rough idea. So the axle's back in place. And I got it shimmed. There's like a little lift elevator right there. And I got about, I don't know, about a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch above the axle is where the engine is. Again, we have to put a plate there. So it's going to even have to be a little bit more room than that to clear it. But I'd say we're down inch and a half, two inches. Let's try lowering that body back down and on again and see how that looks for us. So we could still grind that little tab off that's hitting the bottom there, but I like that. We could also, you know, change the end of that spark wig. We could probably shorten that up a hair, get that tucked in. But we're nowhere near that rib anymore that was up top. And we're sitting down on the, the chassis of it. Yeah, access to the plug would be, eh. I don't know, too bad. Plus you could also kind of think about it. We could probably make it so that the body just has like some quick release pins, you know, that it comes off fairly easy. That's giving us some room. Not enough room to get the gas tank and stuff back in there, but still we'll have to maybe put a barrel or something up on the, on the back there. How's the rest of it looking? Let's go, um, shove the back two tires on it and we'll just see how the shell looks. Uh, in reference to them, make sure there's no other issues with it. I think we're getting kind of zeroed in on it though. Needs a musty one license plate.
Actually, it's pretty good. Scale-wise, let's go look at both front and rear. Because that's about where it would stay. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Again, it's sitting up in the air on the lift. So I'll try to picture it, you know, sitting a little bit more you know, down on the ground over there. Perfect. Think I'll fit in it? <laughs> <laughs> There's the other part of it. I was like a worst case scenario. We can make like a, uh, a bar stool and you just kind of sit from up here. <laughs> um, hmm. I might try. Yeah, this will be graceful. Chances are I knock it right off the bench altogether. <laughs> there's getting in and there's also getting out. Oh, she's gonna be cozy. <laughs> Now I know why those two cutouts were there to put your knees. So if I were to take a pad and bring it so they sat right about there, realistically, I think that might be the way we have to go. The higher up, the more room you can kind of get, but then you'd be sitting kind of like a, a clown car. I think right about, right about there, which is about five inches up off the frame. <laughs> oh, big kids. Oh, I made it. Were you thoroughly entertained? You wanted to see me fall off on the bench, didn't you? So as to be expected, it sat over time and all the air went out of the tires. A while ago, somebody recommended uh, putting motor oil in the tire. And I guess what the uh, idea is, the rubber on the inside of the tire gets a little on the gooey side. Kind of like, if you ever saw under a car, like where a car had an oil leak and the motor mounts would get puffed out and the rubber would kind of like expand out of them. I guess it's that same kind of idea that the rubber, the oil impregnates the rubber and it makes it swell all the jokes <laughs> so i'm gonna go try that i'm gonna pop the uh center of the valve stem out get an oil can i'm gonna pump some oil in them throw some air in them and we'll just let it sit for a while again this project's gonna take a little bit so hopefully it, it does it if not uh probably lawnmower tractors uh tires we can put on it and do the same thing but let's give it a shot probably what we could do too is take um We'll let it sit on one side. We'll put oil in it because I think a lot of it was on the sidewall. And we'll flip it to that side so there's air pressure forcing the oil into the pores. Because really, it's not the rubber that holds the tire together. It's the um, cords that are in it. Rubber kind of holds the air together. <laughs> so this is actually going to be barn chain oil. I'll show you what it is. That's what we're putting in. Blech. I'm going to give it a little bit of vacuum. Get some air out of it. And we can fill it. They'll draw it in as I let the tire out. So I'm going to do that. Put a decent amount in. Because it's going to have to be enough to coat the whole thing. So I'm going to work on that for a little bit. We'll put the valve stem back in it. We'll fill it back up with air. And we'll let it sit. I'm going to go to lunch. We'll spray it down and we'll see if it kind of changes how much it leaks out of these pores. I put the stem back in. Let's give her some PSIs. Good. So if we spray it right now, it should have leaking going on. And what I'll do is I'll kind of like rotate it around and move it around a bunch. And we'll see if those um, leaks go away. Here's a crack that's along this top wall here. It's bubbling here, here, here. Give it, I'll bring you back in a second. We'll let them bubble up just to get, give herself an idea. Yeah, I see she's frosting up pretty good. She's up there. So I guess the idea now 
we just take it and we'll let that oil kind of slither and slither itself around. Probably be good if I could put it on something. We'll see if that makes any difference. This this side, the oil was already sitting on it. Like I said, to you, it probably takes some time. It's got to kind of affect that rubber. Like when I see a, you know, you see a motor mounts on a car or like a, a chassis mount on the bed of a truck, and you spray it with oil or or um, front like sway bar bushings, all that rubber stuff. They swell up over time, so it does take a, a while to happen. Yeah. I know it needs a valve stem too. I saw it leaking. So we do have to pop the bead anyway. Alright. I'm going to go to the tractor supply and see if I could find a, uh, a better sprocket. I may try to beat this one back into submission because uh, we don't know what the gear ratio is going to be. You can see the teeth are kind of rolling on this one anyway. Plus the hub's all crappy and you know, like a, uh, it's got a bend to it and all. So we'll see. If I can find something that's similar and not ridiculously expensive, we'll grab it. If not, we'll put this one together with it. We'll see how the gear ratio is. You kind of want, if you don't have a gear reduction, this is a bigger engine, so I wouldn't see it being a problem. You almost want to try to get as close to possible, like that would be too small. You would want um, <laughs> as close to the tire, the tire diameter as possible, especially, like I said, if you're running like a six horse or a five horse motor. Uh, this one may not be as much of an issue. And if not, with something like that sprocket, they'll run a gear reduction. You run a jack shaft, you go from a, a small sprocket on the engine to a big sprocket, and then on the other end of the, the same shaft, on this would be the um, jack shaft and then I'm trying to find out where the uh, where the clutch went and then another small sprocket to a big sprocket and you just kind of divide it over two different ones so I got back from lunch in oh, about an hour hour and a half and this is the side that was already facing up and I sprayed it down nothing even the valve stem that was leaking, it was leaking around the base of the valve stem before, it, it is not leaking anymore. So, I guess uh, I was going to be a little uh, skeptical whether that was going to work or not. But it actually does seem like it might be doing what it's supposed to be doing. Let's go give, this is the side that's been facing down. The only thing I see really happening, a little bit at the bead, let's see if that comes back. No shit, huh? <laughs> and that's just quick too, you know. I can imagine over time it might even get a little bit better. So I'm actually going to go do the other tire. And uh, we'll get back into doing some metal work right now. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way the frame is lined up with everything. So let's get the engine off, the body off. And let's go a little bit more permanent on, you know, fixing that union over there. I'm going to heat those front corners up to get the metal to relax. And we can probably weld that crossbar permanent solid too. And then we can start building our... our uh, our motor mount plate. Drop everything on the floor. Yeah. Clamp that bar so it's straight in the back. I'm gonna throw some heat on the corners though to get the metal to relax. And then we'll buzz that up. We could fill these. I'm gonna grind this stuff off that we don't need in that little nub that's underneath here. We get rid of all that. We'll kind of clean this up and we'll see what we can use for a plate. We've got to see if the one that was here even matches the bolt pattern. Did that to both sides. Let's go take the clamps off of it and see if it'll maintain its shape now. Mostly. I'm going to put a bar on them and heat it. Give them a little bit more tweak. I just, I just want to get rid of any kind of built up pressure that's in it. Half it's gone already. So. 
So I grind that frame up pretty good and got it welded up and I was ready to put the axle back in but we're going to need the sprocket to be able to um, figure out where we're going to put the motor. So let's um, see if we can bend this one somewhat back into submission. I would say actually I'm looking at it. It seems like this is actually kicked this way. I wonder if they were trying to beat it with a hammer. I should probably flip it around then, huh? Mark it. It's going like this. And then we'll find its high spot. Right. And we'll see where it touches and we'll give her some persu gentle persuasion. And see if we can get that bend out of it. I can actually physically see it too. I can see like right here. Let's um, maybe an adjustable. We can get. I, I don't know how much it's gonna fight us. The other thing too, I could, I could probably put it in a press. You can lay it flat. Let's just see if it has any give to it first. It might be fairly soft. Again, it might not be. Let's go see if we can just kind of. Should probably go like this. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> um, I'm gonna resort to um, the beatings. I may put it in the arbor press too and try to press on it. That sprocket is pretty much beat back into submission. The bolt holes that both the inner and outer hub together need some love. Let's go see if we can. Uh, clean, clean them up. This should be the bolt that would go in there. That's good. Because without doing that, it goes in about that far and stops. Let's go. Rinse them out. That should do this just fine. I like using the drill, and then the drill has drag on it. It's not like you can snap the tap, it'll just spin on the chuck. So I'm going to blow those out, wash them out, and we can bolt that back together on the axle. Get the axle back under it. So I got the frame all cleaned up, buttoned up, welded. The axle is bolted back in position, and the sprocket is sitting on it. And we got the engine right here. Here's the original base plate that I would have sat on. And we're looking at that hole, that hole, and this one that's a slide. You could possibly get that to bolts on there, but there's not going to be any adjustment for the engine. And you need that for uh, tweaking the play that's in the chain. So we're going to have to come up with something else. Let's go metal shopping. And back down to the land of... Metal Misfits. Get these. I don't think it's going to be wide enough though. We could possibly use the two of them together alongside each other. We got... That's going to be heavy. Actually, maybe that's what we want. This is a, a plate for a winch that I didn't use. It came with um, the one that's on my trailer. Let's go pull that out of there. Yeah, we will bring that over and we'll bring those two pieces over. While we're here, anything else jump out at us? I don't think so. I was thinking about putting like two rails underneath it and then welding that a plate to it. But me, that one plate might be just big enough to do everything by itself. All right, let's go drag those over. Yeah, we 
you think the chances are the two bolt holes are already started in here? There and there. No, it's off by a little bit. That's okay. Let's go look at that frame. These are going to be too short, right? Yeah. Let's go for the biggie. I think this is our, our way out. I don't know if we should go. Like I said, I want to drop it down below. And the idea was to you know, weld two bars underneath it. Nothing saying we can't notch it. We just got to clear that axle. So what we could actually do is notch it for the axle. Fil figure this thing flipped over the other way. We could probably make like a, a hump in it. Yeah. Let's go uh, slide that under there. We could actually notch it. Maybe we'll even just cut it now. You can cut this off. You don't need this. And we should probably make it so it goes right past on each end of the frame. And then we can whittle in. Let's see. That's going to be like that. I don't know. <laughs> Let's cut. Get it something that we can kind of place underneath there. And then we'll set the engine on top of it. We got to try to figure out our spacing for where our sprockets are going to be. Is this one going to be too close, too far away? And is the body going to fit? And the brake. Yeah, that's gonna take a while. That's the short one to do it. The other one's the full length. I don't think it's gonna fit in there yet until we notch it. No. on top. Roughly the other side's got plenty of notch already cut in it. But we are gonna need to go basically from there to there. Let's get rid of that material. I might do the same on the other side. I'll, I'll leave about I guess it, let's try it at that level first. I'll do the same on the other side and uh, see how if that'll fit underneath there. We just need enough to clear the axle. I say let's play with all the tools. I'm gonna go in there with a cutting wheel, cut it this way, but then it'd be past the points. We could just turn it into liquid and vaporize it. Please, my cutter. Let's give ourselves a little straight edge there. Good try, I'll fit that and see how it goes in there. Come okay, on, you gonna make it? The other side needs to be carved a little bit because I forgot to do it. <laughs> I said I was gonna do it. It's close. Yeah, we need um and knock off about a quarter inch or so on the other end and we won't have that drag. There we go, we got plenty of clearance. Shouldn't be an issue. Let's um plop the engine on it and we got to be able to get the clutch set up with the chain and then there's a brake that would go on it too we could probably flip that sprocket over so the brake I got it I ordered a new one this one's all trashed but you got to figure that's the size of it and it had a, a band that was attached to there 
that wrapped around it and grabbed it. So we just gotta make sure there's enough room for that and then the sprocket. Let's go pop the engine up on there, see what that, that looks like. So right now that base plate is centered. I'm trying to make it, like I said, enough room to be able to get that brake drum in there, which I'm thinking about right there. So I have it kicked over so we can move this base plate that way. Eh, maybe an inch. I was just trying to keep the center of gravity somewhat in the middle. I don't think that's going to make too much of an effect. You got to remember too, if you're looking at that pull start, this is just a bunch of sheet metal. It's really the center of it, I would say, is the center of that valve cover. So I think we'll be perfectly fine. We got enough room around the pull start. We should probably just plop the body on it one last time and make sure we're going to clear everything we need. And then what we'll do is we'll put a couple tacks on that base plate. And until that brake drum comes in, um, maybe we'll just kind of clamp the engine down to it. And I want to look into, you know, at least trying to fire it up. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go throw the body back on it. And then we'll, as long as we're confirmed with that, we'll, um, <laughs> think I'm going along. I'm going to move it over what I said, the amount I wanted to move it over. Then we'll put the body on it. And if it's good, we'll scribe it and uh, put a couple tacks on it. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. We got sitting right about where we want it. I don't see anything standing out at us that, you see the gap, I am kind of touching right there. I, I did grind that little tab off that we were talking about earlier. And as far as the engine, the spark plug is rubbing up against it and the valve cover has about a quarter inch gap. I'm looking right there. Exhaust shouldn't be an issue. We come out here somewhere. Plenty of room for the brake to fit in there. I don't see any issue with the clutch. And we're centered on the, the base plate. So let's go mark roughly where it is when the body's off and kind of know where it was. Might even be able to drill it as far as, um, cause we're gonna slot it anyway. So it has some movement to it. Get back in there. Okay, right, so I'm gonna get that body back off of there. We'll throw some tacks on here. And what's good too, we don't even have to worry about stiffening this up because this is gonna take care of it. Overkill, I tell you. Gotta switch the helmet and grind to weld. Those walls are in spots, in case we do need to move it, we can cut them off for easy to access. But that should do it for, uh... Good place for a winch. So kind of one of the other problem we're gonna run into is, generally you would slide a, a, an engine forward and back to adjust the chain, but we do not, it's almost dead center over the top of it. So what that means, all right, so we got a link there. So we want to get rid of this link and rid of that one. Just get one in there. Is um, we're probably gonna have to shim the engine up and down to make it adjustable. Because right now it's gonna have too much slop in it. And let's go. Break a chain. Basically, we just push it. We're pushing the pin out of the center of it. 
and then we're going to replace it with a master link. And when we back this off, that outer link should just fall right off. And that part falls off, and then hopefully, sometimes it fights you. you gotta wiggle the other one out. I'm going to take a second, take a grinder, just kind of buzz the tip of that just so it can clear. And then we'll do the same to get rid of that one. And hopefully I got a master link. <laughs> well, as of right now, it seems pretty decent. But like I said, we, we could shim the motor up and down. We got yeah, that much play. And that chain's going to stretch too over time. Let's um, clamp the engine down. Uh, actually, we're going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to go throw some keys and some things here and there and just kind of snug them up a little. We'll throw the key in there. We'll throw a key in there. Uh, maybe we throw the wheels on it. And uh, we can try to fire this up. I, I just want to kind of see how everything's going to operate together. Make sure we don't have any outstanding issues. I don't see any of it as of yet, but that's the whole idea trying to do that. Yeah, so I'm going to go button up some stuff and uh, let's just go for a little bit of uh, making noise with no muffler. That's kind of together. I got the set screws in the clutch. I tightened up on this, put a key in it, um, a key in the wheel. And you have to space, there's um, right here this, and this is a spacer, because there's really, right now, there's nothing to stop the axle from walking left or right. They make collars that you can put on them and lock on. I may go order some of those, but the way they had it set up before, they were just using this spacer between the pretend this is the uh the hub of the, of the wheel and they use the spacer to lock it in so if this wasn't here you could literally just push that axle that direction but we're gonna leave none of that on there to try to help it not walk i'm afraid we're going to spin it up and <laughs> the axles are going to walk in the upper and lower sprocket will no longer play well together <laughs> and make a mess all right let's um I'm going to top off the oil and let's go pop that float ball off. See what the inside of that carb looks like. Well, now's a fine time to go see what kind of condition your engine's in. That you already committed. Yeah, let's see what we got. Ooh, that looks nice and clean. Awesome. Well, let's leave that well enough alone. The carburetor is uh, not sitting up against the cylinder head tight. The air cleaner holds it, the body of the air cleaner two nuts on here so I go get some big nuts yes yes I will because we need something to hold that against there so it doesn't have an intake leak so I'll stack a couple of big nuts there and we'll put the two stock ones on there just to hold pressure on the carb we disconnected the ignition switch I don't think it needs to be connected it was that and there was like a, a capacitor I don't know if you can see it I don't think those are going to be an issue. I don't think they need to be hooked up. And let's just go check for Spock. Yeah, no. Jesus. So hopefully, it performs. Yes, there is. Awesome. Let's go uh, drill a little bit down the plug hole and give her a yank. Frank. And a little squirt for you. I kind of missed a little. It's kind of like a morning pee. It split its stream. It might be a tad loud considering that's our exhaust system. An inch from the valve. <laughs> I say no choke. And the throttle, this, our throttle's still hooked up here. Let's go give her nothing. So she does. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, fill that fuel bowl up. I don't know if it'll fill in through the little nozzle. Prime it that way. Then we'll dump a little bit down the Get 
That's all it's going to take. It's going to give her a little squirt and a carb. See if she stays running. <laughs> Tires a little out of balance, huh? We need to rev it up too much. I think our clutch is up. Sounds like it got misaligned a little too. Yeah, the sprocket. This needs to go this way a little, or this has to come out. And yeah, it's loose. That's why it's, it's still floating down there. That's what I was afraid of. I didn't want to tighten that up because you've got to take it all apart yet. <laughs> Let me see if I can cinch that bottom sprocket up a little bit. We'll give her one more and uh, giggle. Back you over here more. Let's see if we can get to idle. Just want to listen to the engine a little bit. Um, I should probably grab a regular screwdriver so I can turn it down just a hair. Yeah, the idle doesn't want to come down. It's, I got it all the way off. I have to go look into that. So that's the stop for the idle. I was running all the way in and it's still not enough to close it down. She's going to be a tad fast. Again, it was on a generator or something. So maybe the idle circuit was not that important. <laughs> so I got to keep that in mind. Other than that, it seems decent. All right, let's go do it one more time. I want to see flames coming out of the exhaust. We'll rev her a little bit. See if we can blow something apart. Let's go give her some RPMs this time. Are we still nothing gonna fall off. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. The sprocket walked. You can see it moved over that far. That's what the issue was. Thought I had it tight. Guess not. <laughs> I was afraid of. Oh well. Go out with some, bar some sparks in the bang, right? Cool. Well, guys, I think that is going to kind of wrap this one up for today. I ordered some other, I ordered the brake I'm waiting on. Um, we still have plenty to do. We got to make an exhaust system, we got to make a throttle for it. Uh, an intake, the body has to get bolted down, and you know, of course all the stuff welded up. We gotta figure out what we're gonna do for a steering wheel. I might do something where it kind of kicks upward and we put a swivel up on it and you kind of steer more straight down on it. Cause I may put a regular seat for a little kid and then maybe we sit up on top and just put our feet down, down there when we wanna try to ride it around because I think it's just gonna be a little, a, a tad too small. <laughs> <laughs> for us but that'll be on uh probably next week's video i do have if it's not ready in time i have like a half hour video that is um ready to go just in case but uh we'll worry about that when we get there but for this one i think we're gonna go call it guys thank y'all for hanging out with me having a little bit of fun being an idiot and uh we'll do it we'll do it again sometime till then a little later